Okay, all right, there we go. Camera didn't want to get to work today. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great. Got some new lights here. The main focus of the video today is really gonna be a bulb haul. I'm gonna talk about some bulbs. You see, it's, it's getting dark out. And I don't wanna wait till tomorrow to put these up, but I can't put them up until I show you the, here's the lights. I've been hearing the comments. Jeff, why don't you have lights on the trees? The ones around the pool. And I just, I, I don't know, I just haven't gotten around to it. Here we are, let's do it. Going to do it quickly. I don't actually like the thumb hole. Sometimes I do, the problem is when there is the thumb hole, I can't stop having my thumb inside the thumb hole. It's just too much for somebody who's easily distracted. That's probably what's the real situation is here. Solar powered string lights, got them for the planters by the pool. There's nothing necessarily fantastic about these. I haven't even tried this brand before, but I figured I would show y'all since I'm always showing y'all everything because you know the internet. I have a tripod directly behind me, but for some reason, this is how I'm choosing to get things done. Yeah, see, solar powered, solar panel, and then the lights. I was trying to find some that didn't have a ridiculous amount of lights on them. A lot of them were like 75 feet and up, and I was like, I don't need that many for these little spring grove arbs. The reason I picked these out was because they were the smaller of the sets. There we have it. And what, what am I gonna do with those? I charged them all up, so I'll figure out something to do with those too. I came with stakes. I'm gonna get those punched, their stakes, and then I'll get the lights strung up, and then we'll have a look at them when it gets dark outside, and then we'll cut back to tomorrow and do the things with the bulbs. That's probably the reason most of you are here. Oh, that looks so nice. The camera really blows it out, so it's a little bit harder to see. You can tell better on there. Tried to keep the lines as even as I could. I almost doubled up and did both sets on each one of these. I was thinking there's not enough on here, but the more I looked at it, I was like, yeah, I think it would just look too messy if I put two sets on here. And it would be much more complicated getting them out of these. Just stuck with the one for each. Isn't that so nice? I know next the thing is going to be people saying I need to put ornaments on them. That's too much. I'm not going to do that. Stop it. Actually, I just don't have time. I put the other sets over here into the bamboo. Doesn't the shovel look great there? Go with it. This is all very last minute. Make it look nice later. That's the whole point of this video. So do some work outside, get things looking good again, tidy up. I've already done an awful lot of that off camera. The table, look at that, there's so much room on the table, can do things on there again. Tomorrow or a few minutes from now, maybe get some more planters done up there on the top of the hot tub and get the bulbs out. The main thing, getting the bulbs out, can go through them all. There's some really exciting ones. I hit, there's a lot of work, there's so many bulbs to plant. There's a lot of work to do as far as that's concerned, but I'm mostly just excited to get them out and talk about them. There's some fun stuff to look at. I also got new string lights to go on the back of the glider here, but I don't, I'm not doing that tonight. There's nowhere to plug it in. This ornament ball, it's using up all my, all my spots. Don't have anything to plug it into. Grab another extension cord tomorrow and then I can make that work. And get that other blue cushion flipped back over. Yeah, this is good. It's a nice start. Not start, this is, I'm not gonna do any more, this is plenty. Okay, I could maybe throw some on these sugar and spice cypress down here. That might be a good idea, but I, I don't know. I'm gonna think about that. A little messy, it was hard. You know those string lights with the wire? I tried. Doesn't look as messy in person, I promise. Looks very nice in person. Can't really even tell that there's as many lines. With that one, I might go through and just pinch, just poke some of the wires in so that there's some more depth. I like when the lights are inside and outside. There's that dimension and things are lit up inside. These are string lights, so they're not gonna do much to light things up. Y'all know those lights are staying on there forever, right? These are gonna be 30 feet tall someday with a six foot trunk wrapped up tight in fairy lights. No, not really, I won't do that, but it's, they're gonna be a pain to remove. That's the nice about the white lights. I don't feel bad about leaving those on there all year. When these get moved back over into the shade for some privacy, these get moved. If you don't know if you're new here, these planters are only here during the fall into the mid spring. And then palm trees go into these containers and these spring grove arbs go into some planters that are back in the shade. And then I move them back out here in the winter time for some nice evergreen texture. Make things look nice and alive. So are you done? He's been pouting. I know why, it's time for dinner. He's hungry, he wants food. Okay, we'll pop back in the morning with some bulbs. Kitten, what you doing kitten? Not for you, I'm trying to get her used to the camera. You're not gonna be a kitty that runs, but you like that tree. You're gonna knock it over? For the fifth time today, I need to move this thing. I just set up there to shape it. Because <laughs> you can see it's a desperate need of shaping. On multiple occasions, I've come in here and found this thing laying on the ground because of you. Stinky, little stinky, always in there causing trouble. Don't bite it. Don't bite, no, don't do it. 
don't do it, that's dangerous. That scene from Chris's vacation flashing in my mind whenever I see her do that. She hasn't bit the cords before, and those are LED and low voltage, but still, I don't want her chewing on cords. Tobes, how you doing? You, you seem you seem like Toby. Turbo, relentlessly bored as always, unless you're outside by the pool. Relate to that, you like the, the someone gave this to me for Christmas, cute duck, right? You like it, like the duck? It's neat. Talking quietly, because there are people in the house working on building things, redoing walls and things. It's weird, I don't like filming in here right now. You being a good watch cat, Pumpkin? An eye on things, being a good supervisor, Pumpkin? You good supervisor? <laughs> okay, yeah, that was a lot more than Pumpkin. Okay, I've seen the pets, let's go outside. Have some fun with some bulbs. And, no, hold on. Kitten, look at what she's doing. Look how she drinks out of the dog's water bowl. Why? You don't have to do that. You got bowls of water all over the house with cat water. And I'm, I mean, it's, the water is the same for both. You know what I mean? Water bowls for cats. She drinks out of this one, then she jumps down and comes over here because apparently this water that's exactly the same is better. Exactly the same. It all comes out of the same pitcher. Okay, that's all. But now we can go outside and look at some bulbs. Okay, you're, you're gonna have to move. You can't just sit there. You're right in front of the door. Do you want to go out? That's what I thought. Good boy. Ask them like three times to get up. There you go. Go on. Outdoors. Okay, so here's the deal. It's gonna be loud. There's construction going on up there. A lot of it. Just machines all over the place. Just gonna work through it. It's not ideal. Not very pleasant. But is what it is. Here they are. Lots of bulbs. Got some pretty exciting stuff here. Stuff I'm excited about anyways. You can see there are a lot of boxes. It's because I ordered from a lot of places because no one place had everything I wanted. And that's my fault. It's because I waited too long to place my orders. These things sell out fairly quickly, especially from color blends. That's that right here. It's backwards, color blends. I waited for sales before I started ordering things. And I figured this would be a fun way to show off the bulbs because there's not really much to see with bulbs, right? You're just there's bulbs, there's, you can't see much. I have lots of stuff to put up on the screen though. I'll have pictures for what the different things are, but there's gonna be some way to compare the quality of what's showing up here from these different places to an extent, right? We'll talk about some of that as I go through everything and just uh, the differences between the places that I ordered from. It's not a lot of differences to be honest, other than color blends. They're, they stand on their own, everybody else here Holland Bulb Farm, Tulips.com, and Tulip Worlds. It's all basically the same. I shouldn't say that. They're not basically the same. They have differences. There are some unique traits, I believe, with Tulip Worlds. I'll go through these together, and I'll remember certain things as we go. I place these orders around the time of Black Friday, so it's been a minute, and I don't remember an awful lot. I also have some bulb tone out here. I don't know. I don't know why. You know, this doesn't need to be applied until the plants are done flowering. So here's bulb tone. Good to have. You're planting lots of bulbs. Don't need that right now, though. Not until spring or late spring, even. Which one should we start with? I'm thinking should probably go from least exciting to most exciting, right? That would probably make the most sense. Actually, I have no idea what's in this one. That might be a fun one to start with, just so that I can refresh my memory as to what is inside of these boxes. This is Tulip Worlds. Very hard to see. That is a piece of paper sitting over everything. From Tulip World, I have a box that is absolutely stuffed full of daffodils. I don't do a lot with tulips. I think they're cool, but our weather here is sometimes they do well, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they come up too early. I love daffodils. They are a resilient plant that come back year after year after year. They can grow in the sun or the shade. And there's tons of variety with them too. There's so much to pick from with daffodils. So I ordered a couple hundred from this place. There's not a lot to see here but I'll put it up on the screen. Looks like they also sent a guide to fall planting. I appreciate that, that's nice. Is that too loud or is it a pleasant sound? I can't tell, is this asmr -y? Do we like that? Probably not, it's probably bad. Only two different types of daffodils. That's all I ordered from Tulip World. They had the best price, the best quantity on the tete a -tets and the minnow daffodils, Narcissus. There are 50 in each one of these bags, so I have 200 of the minnows and uh, 100 of the tete a -tets. I wanted to order more of the tete-a-tetes, but that's a plant that I, well, let's talk about them first. Let me describe them. These are both tiny daffodils. Minnow is a neat one. Only gets about eight inches high. They have a cream flower with a hint of yellow in them. They have the tiniest little flowers on them. It's roughly the size of a quarter. 
and they usually have a pair of flowers at the least on each one of their stems. Despite the, the bag saying 14 to 18 inches, these are both daffodils that stay very small. They just pop up above the ground and give you teeny tiny little fun, delicate dainty spring flowers. Same thing with the tete-a-tete, -tete, but the tete-a-tete -tete gets seven to nine inches, so very, very small. And they'll usually have one to three, I feel like I've seen them with more than that. Generally, you'll see at least one to three yellow flowers on the tete-a-tetes. If you've been watching my channel, you may know that I love the tete-a-tete -tete daffodils. They're one of my favorites. I have wanted to plant tons of them for a few years, and uh, I plan on ordering a ton of them from Color Blends next September in 2024 or August, whenever they make them available. Some of these places, I don't know about Tulip World or Tulips.com. I've never ordered from those places before. This is my first time. I'm pleased with what I received from them. But I know places like Holland Bulb Farm, their stuff basically always says it's on sale. So it's hard to say what was a good deal and what wasn't. But th well, there was one thing in here that I know was a pretty good price, but everything else was just like, yeah, it's what I would expect to pay. It's like $23, $24 for the 50 packs of the Tete-a-Tetes and only $8.50 for the 50 packs of the minnows. So that was a really good deal. The tete-a-tetes, that's why I was like, I think I'd rather wait until Color Blends has them to place a big order because you can do a lot better than that price-wise on the tete-a-tetes. They're very common. Uh, they just sell out quickly. I didn't get on the ball fast enough with them, but I have a hundred of them here. So that's a good starting point. Hey, you know, with bulbs, you can plant a lot and go, hey, where is everything? You have to plant a ton of them sometimes. So with these little daffodils, I'm gonna be using these in containers or on the garden. There's a lot of noise with all that plastic in the machine in the background. I probably should be sitting so I'm talking. I'm gonna be putting those into mixed containers around the patio. And I would like to eventually someday, probably not with the quantity that I have here, only having a hundred, only a hundred. I would really like to naturalize an area on my hill back here in the garden, naturalize the daffodils. There's an area where the grass never really gets all that tall because it's fairly shaded. It's not deep shade, it gets dappled light, just right for daffodils, can take full sun, but they can take the dappled shade too. That's kind of the whole thing about why I like them. I talked about that before, but I would love to have them mixed in to the yard up along the hill and then moving over into the landscaping more down in this direction over here. I'm gonna need a lot more than a hundred. So the hundred that I have, those are going in containers. Now, tulips.com. Actually, no, I don't wanna do Tulip World and tulips.com right next to each other because I feel like that's gonna end up being confusing for people remembering who was who. If anybody even cares, let's go with Holland Bulb Farm next. Bulb Farm, big commercial place. You've probably heard of them before. They're all over the internet. They advertise all over Instagram. Uh, what are you doing, camera? You decide you don't want to work? I thought over here falling asleep on the job. There's some neat stuff in here. Holland Bulb Farm is a place I've ordered from many, many times. I have mixed things to say about them. Mostly, it's when I've ordered the Stuttgart Cannas, which is a really beautiful variegated canna, I have trouble getting them from any place that actually is sending me a Stuttgart canna. Oh, that's my only gripe with them is that when I've ordered those cannas, they haven't been those cannas before, but that's been the case for everybody I've ordered that particular plant from. In here, more little daffodils. 50 of the Jetfire daffodils. They're a neat one. They stay small, just like all the other ones do. Pricing on par with the tete tets It's like 23 bucks for a 50 pack, so nothing spectacular there. Jetfires only go six inches tall. I think they go, it says six to 10 inches, but still, if they stay on the six inch side, that's a tiny little daffodil with a yellow and orange flower on it. They describe it as a mandarin orange cup in the middle of the flower, just another tiny daffodil. The tiny daffodils are so great for working into containers because they don't overdo it. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right way to describe it. Like they add a lot without it looking like they're trying too hard, like tulips. Tulips are always trying too hard. I mean, I like tulips, but you know, they, are so pretty. You do all that work and you get like a year, maybe two out of them. I don't know. Just think there are more fun options out there, but tulips do look beautiful and planted in big drifts. I have some tulips. We'll talk about tulips later. Then there are three of these, which makes 45 of some beautiful hyacinths. The Jan Boss, 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 I don't know. French maybe, I'm not sure. Jam oh, I forgot. There's another thing of the jet fires in here, right? 
No, no, no. These are the canicula. Okay, well, we'll talk about those next. This is fun. Lots of surprises for me here, too, because I've forgotten about everything in my stupor of trying to set, settle out these orders when I place them. The, sorry, Jambos hyacinths. They have a beautiful, to me, in my vision, it's more of a fuchsia, maybe magenta pink. It, when I've seen them in person, it's a very vibrant, deep, Pink. I don't see colors the way a lot of other people do, so maybe they're red. I don't know. Regardless, they're beautiful. It's also a rather large hyacinth. They have an extremely strong fragrance. A lot of hyacinths have a strong fragrance, but these, it's supposed to be pretty superb. I have planted these before from pre-grown plants, like you buy the bulbs that are already going in the springtime. I didn't really notice much of a fragrance, but that could just be me. It could have been the time of year. Maybe the grower didn't have the best quality bulbs. I don't know. It's a hyacinth. They go eight to 10 inches. They have really big, strong, sturdy, and full flower sets on them. And again, it's just a nice, vibrant color, which is something that's sometimes hard to find when it comes to spring plants. A lot of the colors are a pastel and washed out. And I tend to like colors to be really saturated and deep. Those have been high on my list of bulbs I wanted to make sure to get a hold of. So now I have 45 of those. I was going to order more but you have to keep in mind with hyacinths, they aren't like daffodils where you can put them in sun to part sun, part shade even, well, even deep shade. I have some daffodils that are grown underneath a uh, Japanese maple in my front yard that were originally planted in sun and the Japanese maple grow and they've been in deep shade for at least six or seven years and they still come up and do their thing every year. That's why daffodils are so great. Pricing on these was pretty good too from what I remember. I was surprised at how many places sold this hyacinth, but did not have them for what I consider to be a reasonable cost. Hyacinths, they can get expensive. I was able to get 15 in each one of these bags for 10 bucks. That's really good for a nice high quality hyacinth. The bulbs themselves looking in the bags, they're not spectacularly large. There's nothing to brag about here. But at 15 of them for $10, I wasn't expecting a whole lot. I'm mostly just hopeful that these are actually the Jambos. If they're not, it's okay. I love hyacinths, but ideally, you get what we order, right? And then the, what was the last one? These caniculatus, is that how you say it? I don't know. Canalicolata, canalicolata. More daffodils. Another 50 pack. It's pretty standard with a lot of these. And just like the other daffodils, these are daffodils that stay very small. They only go four to eight inches high. So teeny, teeny tiny. The flowers to me look almost like little garden fairies or something. I don't really know how to describe it. They're just cute. It's just a really tiny, adorable daffodil. That's really all I have to say about it. It's just tiny and cute. That's been a theme here with the daffodils so far, right? Is little, little stout things. But that's going to change here with the next one. Tulips.com have some nice looking, really big, beautiful like specimen type daffodils. And no, hold on, I can't move on yet. Sun's in my eyes, I hope you can see it. These are adorable. Any other time I would order bulbs and they would send something this small, I would be so disappointed, but these are supposed to be small. Look at this one with its little offsets ready to go. That's nice. That's another good thing about ordering bulbs that are teeny tiny. A lot of places aren't taking the time to divide them up, make sure you only get the 50. There's probably way more than 50 in here. Okay, tulips.com. Not to be confused with Tulips World. Different places, Tulip World, not Tulips World. Never ordered from either of these places before, but I was really into their selection. They had what looked like really nice stuff. This came with some planting guide. That's nice, really detailed too. This is a very nice touch that they included a planting guide that is one in color and also has a great description underneath the pictures to talk about what you should do with your bulbs. And then underneath it, they have the planting charts that we've all seen. Probably if you're into bulbs, talks about the different types, planting depth, their growth height, and then whether or not they naturalize. That's a nice touch to have whether or not they're a good naturalizer mixed in here. And they have the FAQs on the back. This is so nice. I appreciate this. It makes things so much easier for people. With bulbs, it's, they're complicated, but not complicated at the same time. There's just so much to remember with all of the different varieties when it comes to their preferences and how we should do things with them when we're growing them that having a nice little guide printed out and sent with the plants, it's just a nice touch, especially when it comes to planting depth. I only have three different types of bulbs here. There's tulips, daffodils, and then what, hyacinth. 
And for the most part, all those things are going to need to be planted anywhere from six inches to like, I don't know, two inches deep, depending on how much mulch is going to be on top of everything. So I'm not all that concerned about the planting guide, but I think it's a nice touch. Now the other one had a planting guide too, but this one's color and the paper is a good quality. I'm a sucker for nice, thick, heavy duty paper. Drama here, Lady Sparts yield to Monroe, Bearcat second half pressure. What? Oh, this is nice. There are buses to the flower and garden show that'll take you from Christensen's nursery. If you need a ride, get out there, have a nice look at some flowers. Very easily distracted. Let's see what's in here. Oh, these look good. Like, real nice. This is this is good quality here. I like the netting over the plastic, even though both of them are really a pain to dispose of uh, properly. Still, just a great look. This is what I like to see when I order bulbs. The plastic bags, they're okay. It's not, you know, environmentally the best thing. Neither are these, though. These are terrible. The thing with the plastic other ones. They have all those perforations and lots of holes, but things can still get wet and soggy in those if you're not careful. These really do a better job at keeping things dry. The bulb size, well, of course, I'm be impressed by the bulb size <laughs> because uh, all the other daffodils so far have been teeny tiny little dwarfs. These are daffs in here. They're really fun ones too. These are awesome. They're also the most expensive daffodils I think I've ever gotten. I don't even know where to start. The whole reason I even place this order is because there's a daffodil I've wanted for a long time called Precocious. It's one that I'd seen on Color Blend's website, and I guess I could try and get that one out since it's the one we're talking. Do you need to see the bulbs themselves? I mean, they look, they look good, nice big bulbs. That's, this is the Precocious right here, if you want to actually see the bulb on that one. The Precocious is a beautiful daffodil. Precocious has some of the best pink on it that you can get in a daffodil. It's won multiple prizes in the Netherlands, and it just it's just cute. It has the pink cup with a white outline, it's supposed to be a very strong grower, 18 to 20 inches on this one too. None of these are the little guys like the others. These are more meant to be big, bold, and beautiful. And I ordered three of those. Those were not terribly expensive. It's you only get 10 bulbs at a time. So it makes it seem more expensive when you're ordering quantities of 50, like with the other ones. So it was, it was 33 bucks for three of them. So they were 11 bucks for 10. Maybe I was being a little bit dramatic. <laughs> you see what I did? Look, I'm sorry. Drama Queen ordered two of those. There's only 10 in each, so I have 20 of them. It's the flowers. Do I need to say anything else? Just look at the flower on this one. It's a gorgeous daffodil. It has a uh, like coral inner cup on it that bends outward. It's just beautiful. Bends outward. I should say that it flows open instead of having a cupped inner flower. It's more pressed into the petals, almost like a daylily. It's just pretty. I don't know what else to say about it. 16 to 18 inches high. That's an average size daffodil. It's just a daffodil that has gorgeous flowers. That's gonna be the case for everything else from here and on. They're just gonna be really pretty plants. Things with nice, really colorful flowers on them. But yeah, the Drama Queen, I think it might be one of the ones that I'm the most excited about. It has such neat flowers on it, not something that you typically would think you're seeing in a spring flower. Only two left in here, and there's some neat ones too. Apricot Whirl, that's these right here. I have two of those, yeah. Apricot Whirl, a, kind of a similar vibe to the Drama Queen and to the one I'm gonna be talking about after this one, but not as intense of a flower. A split cup, pink and white, daffodil, apricot, really, is, you know, the name, apricot just looks really pretty 16 to 18 inches high just like all the other ones just a fun unique looking daffodil lots of color and the last one i only ordered one of these because i was kind of on the fence about it and this one's called shrike it's a really neat looking daffodil but it's one that looks so cool that i'm almost debating whether or not i even believe it does that make sense white and the inner cup the inner petals stick out and they're frilled or tessellated they have a really cool texture to them that I'm not used to seeing on a daffodil. And the color on it's really interesting too. Color that's similar to everything else I've liked here. I believe the middle of it's more of an orange than a pink. You guys will know better than me because I'll have the picture up there on the screen for you. And I've told you I'm not great with distinguishing shades when it comes to colors, but overall it just looked really interesting. These are all going to be plants that I have to be sure not everything here. The daffodils that I was just recently talking about from tulips.com, these guys over there. I'm going to have to be very careful about making sure to not plant these 
close together because I'm not gonna remember what's what, right? The Shrike and Drama Queen, they're pretty distinguishable. And I don't think that I'll confuse those, but the others, Apricot Worm, Precocious, maybe. Just because, you know, you plant them now and then the spring, you go, oh, what did I plant? I don't even remember. Make sure that these aren't right next to each other, right? Because one, I think that they'll cancel each other out. These are all really beautiful, unique daffodils that should have a spot where they can stand on their own. So they will more than likely be going into the landscape, but I'll probably have some mix into the planters also because I'm gonna wanna see them around the patio, around the seating area during the springtime, instead of having them all out in the garden. But whatever I do have in the planters during the spring will end up in the landscape at some point anyways. Okay, color blends. I'm sure this is the one y'all been waiting to see. Color blends, very famous grower of bulbs, seller of bulbs, made famous by Laura at Garden Answer. Color blends, one huge selection of bulbs and very good prices when you're ordering in bulk. And with bulbs, a lot of us tend to order them in bulk. As much as it looks like there are a lot of bulbs here on the table, once they're all planted up and spread out, it's not actually going to look like that many, despite there being uh, around 800 to 1,000 bulbs in total with everything. It actually just isn't as much as you would think when you get them all planted up, especially if you want big, huge, swooping drifts of everything. They have excellent quality with their bulbs too. Gonna be able to see that in comparison to these other places. Tulips.com, these are nice big bulbs. Really good looking bulbs. I would be happy with these from just about anywhere. Look at that daffodil. That's a monster of a daffodil, a good quality bulb. Very papery though. You can look in here at these others. I mean, just, you can see, look at that. But when you compare, there's just a big difference in the quality and how well the bulbs have been cleaned off and everything. Oh, I like the clip. That's a nice touch, a magnetic clip on the planting guide that came with things. You can put that on the refrigerator and hold on to it. I like that. And I am gonna put up on the fridge, so I'll remember what's all in there. Should I, you want me to open it? You wanna see what's actually in here? It's talking about, it's planting guides. That's all this is. Planting and care instructions. Tells you what to do upon arrival. With your boxes and crates, get them all opened up. I did that as soon as I got there. Plant them as soon as possible. So these have sat around. I didn't mention that. All the bulbs I got have sat for a couple of weeks, but I put them near, <laughs> this is probably not gonna sound great, but they were near a drafty window <laughs> where things are relatively cold. This little outclave on my house over here that's not insulated very well, so the ground is cold and that window's fairly drafty and I have it open fairly often because of the construction of the house, the varnishes and things are using the fumes are just nauseating. So they've been kept out of the light with airflow, especially the color blends one because they have good holes in the sides of the boxes. Ideally, probably not as cool as they should have been kept, but they should be fine. There's still enough time to get these in the ground and let them chill for a few months. Color blends tends to sell out very, very quickly. So I was scraping to get a good selection of things from here, but luckily the main thing I wanted was the Precocious. That's the whole reason I went to their website was for the Precocious. They didn't have it. We talked about that. That's why I ordered them from tulips.com. And that's actually what started this whole downward spiral of ordering a ton of bulbs. A lot of tulips, that's what they're known for. This is the Soul Array Mix tulips. They're red, purple, and yellow with red, an 18 to 20 inch tall tulip. They say yellow with red. In my eyes, that looks orange, and I love that color palette. The orange and purple looks great together. The red, I'll accept it, it's fine. They're a double flowered, heavily textured petal on them with the little ripples on the sides. Just a really colorful, very vibrant mix of tulips. And that's what I like to see. It's a mid to late bloomer. So these should be doing their thing between April and mid-May, somewhere in there. That's all going to depend on our spring conditions, what they decide to get up and going but there were only 200 available. So that's what I ordered. I got a pack of 200. I know that, again, that sounds like a lot. When you're planting things just about four inches apart, that's not actually gonna fill that big of a space. And the space I wanted to put these in is huge, so I'll probably put them somewhere else. A very high impact array of tulips. There's another tulip in here. You wanna just stick with the tulips for right now? This was all they had. And I was really excited about this one. They only had 25 of them. And these are the big apricot. Big apricot has, well, it's what it sounds like, an apricot to what to me looked more like a coral 
colored flower on them. They're very vibrant and it's a tall one, 24 to 26 inches tall. They describe this one as a monster gore with huge long lasting flowers. That's another big reason that I wanted this one. It's one of the largest Darwin hybrid tulips that you can get. That's pretty cool considering the color of flower on there. It's not just a basic all red or all yellow, all pink. It's one that has that gradient of color in it. And that's something that appeals to me. I like when flowers have a gradient with various shades of pinks and yellows and oranges in them. Here's more of the Sol Ray tulips. So there's two bags of 100. Great looking bulbs too. I don't know if I've really talked about that as much as we should have. Tulip bulbs, they look like what I would expect from tulip bulbs. They're nice big bulbs. Ordering larger bulbs is always a good idea with tulips because you don't, I mean, it's always a good idea in general to get larger bulbs, big healthy bulbs. With tulips, the bigger you get them, the better set of flowers you're going to have off of them because you don't usually have them for more than a few years. And really the first year you get the best bloom out of them. The next year they might look okay. And after that they start to dwindle. That was another reason why with the big apricot, I was really drawn to it because it's one of the Darwin hybrids to be very strong growers. Next up, a oh, Spanish bluebells. These are awesome. A turn from everything else I've been talking about here, something different from hyacinths, daffodils, and tulips. Hyacinths noides hispanica, the variety in this one is Excelsior. It's 14 to 18 inches tall, just a beautiful bluebell. You can put them in part sun to shade and they naturalize very well. I have an area over on my hill back over. It's going to be hard to see it, but it's back there. Over here, it's a big mimosa tree. I think that the Spanish bluebells would be really pretty planted up around the base of that tree. But that's why I got those. I could have gotten more. I only got 25 because there are some native bluebells that they're a different actual type of plant, but they have a similar appeal. They're very pretty and they naturalize well and that are native. And I would like to make sure to be planting some native, more native things in the yard. I have a bunch, but it's always good to add more. So. I only got a few of these. Just thought they were fun. Bluebells, if you never planted them, great plants. Really fun, easy to grow, very rewarding. Okay, this is the last daffodil. Really neat one. I think all the ones I got were pretty neat, but this is really cool. The watch up. These are big, 18 to 20 inch daffodils. They're an early to mid spring bloomer. White with soft white, yellow turning cream. Uh, that's the flower description there. Here's the picture of them. The reason these are neat is because the flowers tend to stand up and look towards you. Sometimes with daffodils, they will hang down and it can be harder to see the flower. And sometimes they'll just point straight out. Kind of like with hellebores, some of them hang down, some of them stick up. Most daffodils just kind of point straight out, you know, parallel to the ground. But the watch up big white flowers that have yellow turning cream on them. It's an interesting description. I got them because the flowers are white. The plants themselves are supposed to be very sturdy. I believe that this is a new one too. The watch up is one that hasn't been around for too long, but it's been very popular. It's supposed to be a good one for the landscape too. So for naturalizing, great option, which is what I got it for, to put into the landscape and let them naturalize. Okay, and that's it for the bulbs. I know it seems like a lot, but in the grand scheme of bulbs, it's really not all that many. The bulk of the larger bulbs over here on this side of the table are bulbs that I'm planning on putting largely in the ground, especially the tulips and make sure those stay all together because those will look really nice if they're all planted together. It's the whole point of the mix. They're separated into bags of 100 so I could do one set in one area of the garden and maybe another set somewhere else. But the rest of them I want mostly in the ground. The reason I like all these little daffodils is because they are excellent in containers. They don't overcrowd. You can put them towards the front and they add a lot of just cute, cheery, happy spring-like texture. They do well in the garden too, the, especially the tete-a-tetes and the minnows. The others I actually don't know about. I haven't grown the jet fire before or the caniculatus. Is that, I don't, do we ever figure out how to say that? I don't know. And I tried to keep the height in mind when it came to things I want to put in containers. I want hyacinths out here around this seeding area because they, they smell so good, right? So I'm not really gonna focus on putting them into the landscape. Probably some of them will end up there, but I want them mostly planted over here in this area. So in the back, I'll probably do some of the more fancy daffodils in the back of the containers, some hyacinths directly in front of them, and then a variety of the dwarf daffodils in the front of the containers. I may stick with all tete-a-tetes or all minnows in one area and then do different ones in different spots. 
I haven't fully decided on that yet. Main thing that I know is when it comes to putting them in the containers, I don't think I want to mix together the dwarf daffodils because I think they look better standing on their own mixed in with other spring plants, like maybe some pansies, something like that. But maybe having the tete tets and minnows or jet fires all in the same containers, I don't I feel like they would take away from each other. So there's more than enough to work with here to spread them out completely because I have these two containers right here at the two hydrangea containers down at the other end, the three right here, the bamboos and the atlas cedar, sugar and spice arb containers over there, and then the two peach trees, which are in the driveway right now, but in the spring, I bring them out and they go right next to these arbs that are in these containers. And that's where the bulk of a lot of these little daffodils are going to go. I think that that's going to look great. Can be a lot of color and try and mix them into the garden space over here, but they need to be things that bloom up early because I want that area cleared out for impatience in the mid to early spring. At early spring, whenever I can find them for sale. And then I have a couple of containers here that I put these use in. These are, I think they're hilly I use. They could be hicks. I'm pretty sure they're hilly I use. I want to make sure to get a whole bunch of daffodils in those. What I'm thinking about doing, and I haven't decided on it yet, is maybe doing some more containers over here. Pardon the lighting. The angle of the sun this year is just trash. It's horrible to film with. These deck planters have been great and I really like them here, but I was thinking maybe I should turn them so that they go the other direction and put these smaller deck planters. I have two of these blue ones right here. They're about the same length, but they're shorter. And having those in the front, ah, it's something to think about. I could put y'all back up on the tripod and we can go over there and see how it looks. Is this unprofessional? Should I actually just be cutting in between moving the camera around and screwing it back into the tripod? That was of course rhetorical. I know, very unprofessional, but you know, it's how we do things over here. Just keeping the flow moving. Oh geez, this is gonna suck. What was I thinking? These ceramic deck planters feel like they're made out of lead. Okay. That looks kind of dumb. I don't know if I like that. I put a U, do I have, let me go grab a U. Let's see, if I were to put one of these down in here, it, let's just pretend that it's potted up in there. Would it, is that better? Maybe the shorter ones should go on the side. Like maybe I have them backwards. Then you can't see the pretty blue. And the whole point was that I feel like the tall deck planters, I want more for privacy from the sides. But when you're actually in the hot tub, it's nice to be able to look out and see the patio. I think that's, Fine, I should, you know what? I bet if I were to paint these other ones black, it's too cold to do that. They have to wait till spring, but if I were to paint those deck planters in the back, the white one, black, brown, bronze, something more earthy and they wouldn't stand out as much, I think that would probably look a lot better, right? Comment down below. I rely on your comments for things like this. I'm genuinely asking, thinking out loud, but also wanting input here. I think that that would be the way to do things because I do, I like the blue in the front. It's just not quite as, I don't know, obtrusive. So that's the way to describe it. Having the big white ones in the front, I've done it for a few years and it's been nice, but it also uh, creates more of a wall and a barrier that I would like. And I want things to feel more open. And I really enjoy layers and tea. Oh, look at all the shadow. That's a sharp shadow. That is crisp. Both the being easily distracted stuff again. I think that's so distracting. I'm sorry, I wasn't looking at the screen before. I'm gonna just keep my hands down while I finish this thought. That was probably so obnoxious. The, uh, what was I saying? Tears, I like tears. Height in the back, lower height right here. And then you can't see right now because the shadows are so bad, but another layer of pottery down below. I think this would look a lot neater and tidier if I were to do things that way. I'll go ahead and grab the other planter and pop the U's in them and flip that other one around and see how it looks. It, well, it's not a drastic improvement because things are still winter messy out here. Although I would like to say, I think winter messy might be cleaner than summer mess, potentially. How's my battery dying? I just put new, oh crap. Better, better. Okay, you know how when batteries start to get old, they don't last for, anyways. I like the way this looks. I think I was saying that winter messy is still much cleaner than summer messy, that's for sure. I've been doing a lot of cleanup out here. I have to, I'm deviating. Should I deviate yet or should I save this for another time? Save it for another time. The use, I like this. Like I will like it more when I paint the white ones, like I said, either a brown or a black, a bronzish, rubbed bronze, aged bronze, something more earth toned. I think that would look better. 
I also think that these blue deck planters in the front would look fantastic if they had something like a lemon balm cypress in them instead of a U. But the U's are what I have, and the lemon balm cypress aren't hardy here. They're a zone seven. Oh, I'm a zone seven. Maybe they are hardy here. I wouldn't put them in a container though, right? Because I'm a new zone seven-er, have to say that. I've always been a zone sixer, just got bumped up to zone seven, and it's a. Uh, I'm taking that with a grain of salt. I'll be referring to myself as a 6B slash 7A person probably for a while here. I'm gonna take a few years till I'm convinced on this zone seven thing that they're telling us for St. Louis. But anyways, the hilly I use, they, those two have tags on, that's what they are. That's what I have. And I like them. They're going to serve their purpose of having some nice evergreen structure out here, fall through mid to late spring, whenever more tropicals start to show up in the backyard. And the nice thing I like about the hilly I use, I've talked about this before, is they have a podocarpus feel to them, which I like. They have nice texture and they're very prunable. So I would like for these ones in the back and the white deck planters to eventually basically be the same shape as the planter and pruned into taller, just privacy rectangles in the tops of the containers. The ones in the front, I'm going to have to do something different with, be, different went, different with, I'm gonna want more annuals in those in the summertime. So I'll probably let them grow up more narrow pillar-like and probably keep them thinned out down below so that there's enough airflow to throw some impatience and petunias, something of the sorts in those containers. These are meant to be at least three-year containers. You can stay in containers for a very long time. Very hardy shrubs, so uh, I might push it past that. We'll just have to wait and see. But three years is about how long I would want to keep any shrub or tree in a container before pulling it, cleaning up the root system, and replanting it with some fresh soil. That's the max. I wouldn't want to go any longer than that. The soil starts to compact and get muddy and loses a lot of its nutrient holding capacity and it becomes not the best thing for the plants. So. Yeah, three years or so, I'll have to pull them and either move them to the ground and start something over or get more long-term, like I was saying, where I want to grow this one out and have them pruned on each side to look nice, pull them and refresh them. Okay, and now I can start thinking about what kind of bulbs I want to put. Do we need to talk about the hollies? Yeah, I know, they're just sitting there. Something happened and we'll talk about it next week, but um, I ordered some more of a different variety and so I'm shuffling in my mind where I'd like to put them. So that's why those are sitting there. And they provide some nice privacy from the neighbor's house because my backyard from right here looks directly into their house and it can get uncomfortable sometimes. So I'm appreciating just having those sitting there for some blockage between the two homes. Bulbs in containers, it's, uh, it's a gamble. Tulips, I'm not gonna bother. I don't have great luck planting tulips in containers unless I do it actually in the springtime when they've been pre-chilled or they've been in a root cell or something like that. Uh, you can keep them in the ground in a basket, in a plastic basket of some sort, and lift them and then move them into containers. That's an option. But it's just not something I'm going to do. The tulips are all going to go on the ground. I'm thinking for these right here, I will probably do some daffodils. I have better luck with daffodils in containers, specifically the tete-a-tetes. Overwintered them in containers many, many, many times, no problems at all. The main risk with overwintering bulbs in containers is desiccation, really. We're prone to not water our containers during the winter time. I know I am. I don't have frost freeze out here. So the water gets shut down. Every container that's out here has to be hand watered every few weeks with a, just by hand with a bucket that comes from the house. So I basically have to load up a bunch of watering cans onto a dolly and go around and hand water everything at least once a month. Really should do it every two weeks. Whether you've had rain, ice, doesn't matter, need to do it. I mentioned I don't want to put all these miniature daffodils in the same containers, but I have no problem with doing like maybe the tete-a-tetes or minnows in the front and the opposite of whatever in the back. So there's different colors. The minnows are a white. So that might look nice with the blue and then have the tete-a-tetes in the back for some yellow backdrop. That might look good. Could do that. I don't know. I have to think about these things and make up my mind. There's a lot to pick through and try and figure out what I want to do with. I have ideas. I know I want the tulips on the hedge down here in front of that hedge. Uh, that may not be the best idea. I'm going to have to think about that just because they are a mid to late tulip. And that berm down there where those laurels are, right above my fingers, 
those have the Pedicits japonicus, the butterbirds, really big leaves in them, on them. And I don't know whether or not the uh, Pedicits, I have to look back at old footage basically and see how big the Pedicits are by mid spring, right? Mid to late spring even, because if they're too big, those are just gonna choke out the tulips and the trees will be flushed out and shade the tulips and it just won't make any sense. The watch up daffodils, those are the ones with the white cup, big stiff sturdy cup flowers that look up at you. I want those under the mimosa tree with the bluebells behind them moving up the hill. I think that'll be a good spot for them. I was talking about the sun just a moment ago, just like two seconds ago, and how the tulips, if I plant them in front of this hedge down here, might be too shaded by the time they're up and ready to bloom because the maple tree will have flushed out. The mimosa takes a lot longer to flush out. It doesn't normally flush out with foliage until like, uh, I don't know, mid to late May. It just depends on the spring. It takes a lot of warmth to get that going. And that's plenty of time for the daffs to be in front of them, in front of them, in front of the mimosa and to do their thing. My mouth is moving faster than my brain, so things aren't coming out precisely how I would like them to. I think you probably get the point. Small daffs, all the minis, that would be the minnow, the jetfire, the caniculatus and the tete-a-tetes are all meant to go into the containers, whereas the largers will more than likely almost all be in the landscape. I'll have some set aside in containers that are big and beautiful where I'll have them as a backdrop to other things. But the bulk of them I want in the landscape and same thing with the tulips, not gonna bother with those in containers. And there are some that I can't even plant yet because the uh, are planters that have all of these cabbages and kales around them those cabbages and kales usually are looking pretty crummy by the time spring rolls around, and those are in the spots where I would want these bulbs planted. Oh, but you know, since I was talking about doing the tete-a-tetes and the white with the minnows in the front, the boy, which is good, the minnows are smaller, and a white flower, then what would probably make the most sense to do would be to do minnows in between. You can't see that. I'll come over here. The sun, horrible today. Haven't seen a cloud here in a long time probably do clusters of three or four minnows in between each one of these kales or cabbages, that is. And then in the peach planters that go in front, do the tete-a-tetes and that will mirror what's going on over there. And then in the front of these containers, something similar, maybe tete-a-tetes with minnows on each side. I have more minnows than I do tete-a-tetes. That's why I can spread them out further and have tete-a-tetes over. I don't know, will the tete-a-tetes blend in though to the bim? I don't know, we don't need to think about this now. I'm actually <laughs> thinking I'm probably going to do a separate video, planting everything up and then revealing what they look like. So that won't even be out until the spring. I just thought it would be fun to talk through it. Sometimes that's helpful to people. Sometimes people find it annoying. I don't know, it's what I do. So if you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you. Well, I only have 200 of those minnows. I'm talking about one, two, three, four, five, six containers already that I'd want to use them in. That's really not going to give quite the impact that I would want. I might, I'm going to look at the website. I might have to order more if they have some more. I probably won't do that because the minnows, they're not a really big, impressive daffodil. They're a dainty one that is more of an accent plant, if that makes any sense at all. So if I have them in these containers over here, then the point is to have them clustered around the base of these arbs and then where the cabbages are with those and probably put pansies, something small and dainty in their place. If I put anything big and bold in between, well, one, there's not room. These arbs, they're getting pretty wide. And two, it's gonna overshadow those minnows, which shouldn't be a problem. The spring plants that they saw around the nurseries here are usually pretty small, dainty little things like pansies or violas. Violas, I could just do a whole bunch of violas in here. With the minnows, that'll look good. That's probably what I'll do. It all sounds good to me. Be able to look back at this in the springtime and see what I've actually decided to do when things are up and blooming. And uh, that should be fun. It's nice to look back at the things and see the process behind the decisions that were made sometimes. I wish I had more of those jet fires. Those are really pretty. Should have ordered more of those. Not that I don't need more. Once I'm done just planting the tulips alone, I'm gonna be so mad at myself for ordering so many bulbs. There's a lot here to go through. It's gonna be dropping bulbs and holes. Just feel like that's not that exciting to watch. I think it's more fun to talk about the bulbs, talk about things to do with them, and to get to see the pictures of them that I already had up on the screen, but put just dropping them in the ground, I don't know. That seems boring unless I have video to cut to when I'm done with that of them actually growing and flowering. Does that, does that make sense? That's why I wait to the spring for everybody to get to see all of that. And there can be some surprises as to what's in the containers and something fun for me to look back on when I forget what I had put where. 
it'll be a nightmare to edit, but I'll be glad that I did it in the long run. That, that's it. That's all. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below some of your favorite places to order bulbs from, some of your favorite bulbs to plant, tips, tricks, always appreciated. Read through the comments. People usually have a lot of good things to offer when it comes to growing bulbs, especially in different zones. I live in a zone where our winters are pretty cold, but we have plenty of days in the 40s and 50s, even occasional 60s that are nice. Might get a couple of those a month, and then otherwise it's generally like below 30 or 40, I should say. Being smack dab in the middle of the country, there's always a few days mixed in where if you're teetering around zero, sometimes for a pretty long time. So that's why I get apprehensive about putting the bulbs in containers, because sometimes they just freeze and rot. Over freeze and rot, I should say. So it's an important thing to pay attention to also is your zone for mostly the dafts and the things want to be perennials with the tulips. Yeah, you know, do what you need to do for where you grow them. Oh, and while I'm at it, are you subscribed? Check down below, make sure, because YouTube has been unsubscribing people, like a lot of people. I've noticed that there are a lot of channels that I watch where I've had to resubscribe lately, and other people have been telling me that they're not subscribed, but they've been watching me for years. So check that out if you don't mind, because YouTube has been wishy-washy. And on that note, I'm gonna go. I got a lot of stuff to do here, a lot of decisions to make. I'm so excited about these really fancy daffodils the Shrike and the Drama Queen and the Apricot and the Precocious, those are gonna be so beautiful. Cannot wait to see what those look like in the springtime. It's gonna be such nice, vibrant color. Uh, and I don't know if I mentioned, this is not the end goal of this area. This is just a starting off point, that's all. Still plenty to be done over here, that's for sure. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye. Okay, no, wait, there have been some developments since the last clip. The, the last clip being when the video ended. While I was on the computer getting the various overlays, all the different pictures of the bulbs to show everybody, I was on Colorblend's website. I don't know if you noticed. I really prefer their pictures over the other websites, even the ones that I ordered from, so I use them for most of what I ordered. They had an updated selection. Not a ton of stuff, but some really nice stuff. They had the Morris Gudinov tulips here. Aren't those beautiful? I ordered 400 of those. They have big beefy blooms filled with peach and red petals that are sometimes streaked, sometimes solid, but always appetizing. One flower could feed a family of four. Huge flowers on these. Very pretty. Cannot wait to get those in the ground. I don't. I didn't need another 400 tulips, but they're just, it's a really pretty one. One that I've had my eyes on. So when they added them back onto the site, I was like, okay, well, I should grab some of those. And then they added the tete-a-tetes. They only had 200 available, but I was like, that's fine. I'll take another 200. So I ordered 200 more of those. And then 100 of the blue squill. Blue squill is a really cool bulb that you can naturalize into the lawn, into the landscape. I want to plant them in with probably the tete-a-tetes or minnows. One of the dwarf daffodils of some sorts along that hill area where I was talking about trying to get some daffodils naturalized. The blue squill looks really pretty when you do that with them. They come up very, very early. That's why they pair well with the tete-a-tetes, because they come up about the same time. And the tete-a-tetes are like just a little bit taller than the blue squill. So yeah, that's all. It's, I wasn't intending. I did, <laughs> don't know how many times in the video I said, I don't need more bulbs. And I was going to be kicking myself for ordering as many as I had. But it was just, it was like it was meant to be, because I really wanted those. I wanted these too, but they were sold out when I was placing my last orders. This, is, this worked out wonderfully. Okay, now we can actually go. Hope y'all are doing well. Bye-bye. Great weekend. See ya.